Hello, it's Howard Rheingold. In 1996, my wife convinced me to convert the old wooden garage out on the asphalt on our, our property at the end of the driveway from a, a storage room into my dream office. So for the, the last 13 years since it, it was finished, I've, I've worked in this place that I, I think of only partially as an, an office. It's also a studio and to some degree a kind of alchemic laboratory where the, the information that, that streams into me uh, is somehow transformed into the books I write courses I teach, and lectures I deliver. That takes place in my dream office. And dream office in the sense that it, it has everything I need within reach, but it's also kind of an externalization of, of my mind. It's, in, a, in a sense, it's sort of the consciousness equivalent of my, my compost pile, where the that dark, rich, uh, takes place at night when you're not looking uh, stuff um, reaches the, the, the place where, where it meets the light of day, whether that's through a, a brush or a, a keyboard. If, if the, the weather doesn't permit me to work while I'm outside in my garden, I, I spend my, my waking hours, my semi-waking hours. You pass a shrine and between two guardians on the way in. Working on big sculptures for Burning Man introduced me to the art of the jigsaw, so I no longer see a need to paint on squares. This guardian is a cross between a Nepalese stupa and a green man, a face made of leaves that you can spot in cathedrals and on streets in Europe. One of my Burning Man sculptures stands directly across the entrance from the green man stupa. I constructed Lola Lotus with the help of my friends from the Mineshaft Society, starting from a painting I had just finished. At the foot of Lola Lotus is an alabaster sculpture that reflects another one of my favorite totems, Garuda, the birdman friend of the gods, celebrated in the Hindu Ramayana. It started with a chunk of pink alabaster, which I worked with rasps and sandpaper. The little gods and demons surrounding the entrance to my office are chthonic spirits I've collected from around the world. Stockholm, Austin, Ubud, Valparaiso, Amsterdam. I learned about chthonic spirits from Lloyd Reynolds, the same Reed professor who taught Steve Jobs that letter forms are beauty and technology. The seven dwarves are chthonic spirits. The red-headed gnome who sit, sits atop magic mushrooms in unsuspecting European public places is a chthonic spirit. They are reminders that the entrance to the underworld is a sacred place, where, as William James put it, around us lie infinite worlds, separated only by the thinnest veils. So I don't actually believe that any supernatural power resides in the objects, but to me they are reminders, what, what Jung would call archetypes, that, 
that point at aspects of mind and reality that are obscured by consensus reality and everyday consciousness. You'll see more of these externalizations of mental symbols of translinguistic states on the walls of my office. Entering the office, you see the chair where I read, often occupied by my dog buddies. My paintings are on the walls with masks I've collected from around the world. Above the window are two paintings inspired by a visit I made to Bali. Here's Garuda again, and Barang, a Balinese chthonic spirit, carvings from Oaxaca and India, a snakeskin I found in the garden, a symbol of trans transformation like a discarded cocoon. Under the window, this watercolor was painted by my mother at age 94. She had surgery she wasn't supposed to survive. She spent months in the intensive care unit and a rehab hospital. They said she would never recover her cognitive or motor faculties again. But when I put a paintbrush in her hand and guided it to paper, I could see the life force flooding back into her. She was an art teacher. She was my teacher. There is no higher calling. Here is a view of my desk from the ladder to the loft. Behind the desk are shelves with shrines and art supplies. On my desk are a pair of espadrilles from Barcelona that I painted. Next to the art shelves are more paintings. I seem to have evolved a number of different styles over the years. My bookshelves, more paintings, a drawing by Jim Woodring he did when I edited the Millennium Whole Earth Catalog. Several of my paintings were done on spider webs that I attached to the canvas with paint, a series I've been working on for years. Looking out uh, towards the driveway, I have a Balinese Barang sculpture that I painted hidden behind my monitor. This shelf contains books I have written in English and translated into other languages, and books to which I've contributed chapters. Justin Hall took this last shot of me from my loft.